So I really like particles. And I used to think that a thousand particles were fun. But then I tried one million. And it's about a thousand times more fun. And with Unity's visual effect graph, having this many particles on screen at once is no longer a problem. The reason for this is that VFX graph creates particles that are simulated on the GPU. This is unlike the standard shuriken particle system where particles are simulated on the CPU. And because doing calculations on the GPU is so much faster, we can create much more complex systems with a huge amount of particles on screen. The drawbacks of this is that because it's simulated on the GPU, it doesn't work with the underlying physics system. There are of course ways to cheat this, but in general, if you want your particles to interact with your game world, consider using the Shuriken particle system. Another thing that makes VFX graph extremely powerful is that it's built as a fully node-based tool. This means that similar to shader graph, we can quickly add and chain together nodes to change the behavior and appearance of our particles. So in this video, we'll get started using the visual effect graph to create cool looking particle systems. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. And with that, let's create some particles. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we are running Unity 2018.3 or later. Also, our project needs to be using the high definition render pipeline. And before we can actually start using the visual effect graph, we need to install it through the package manager. So let's go to window and open up the package manager. Make sure to go under all packages and let's find the visual effect graph. Here we can hit install. And Unity is now going to import VFX graph into our project. And once that's done, we also want to make sure that we are using the newest version of the HD render pipeline. So I'm going to go ahead and update that as well. And we are now ready to start using visual effect graph in our project. So let's close down the package manager and let's try creating a new graph. To do this, we'll go to the project panel, hit create. We'll go under visual effects and select visual effect graph. And let's just call it call effect. And to actually add this effect to our scene, we can simply drag it from the project into the hierarchy and Unity is going to create an empty object with the name of our effect. And on this object is going to be a visual effect component that has a reference to this cool effect asset. And right away we can see particles in our scene. Now to start editing this effect, all we need to do is double click it and it's going to open up in its own separate window. And as with any other window in Unity, we can of course dock this anywhere in the UI. So I'm going to dock it to the side here and make a bit of room for it. Now, if you've ever used Shader Graph, you'll immediately notice quite a few similar looking things. We have the blackboard here for parameters and we have this huge open space where we can add nodes. And navigating around works in just the same way as Shader Graph. We can use middle mouse button to drag and do the same thing with Alt and then left click. We can scroll to zoom. And if there's ever something that we want to focus on, we can always select it and hit F or hit A to show all. Now, what we see here is the structure of a basic particle system. It contains a chain of contexts where each context is responsible for one aspect of the system. Let's just quickly go through these to make sure we understand how each context affects our particles. So at the top of the list here, we have spawn. This context is fairly simple. It's where we would define when to create particles and how many. Next one is initialize. Here we set up the particles starting values. We can choose stuff like where will the particle start? How long is it going to live? And what color does it spawn with? The next one is update. Here we ask what happens to the particle over time? This is where we would apply incremental forces or noise to the particle. And finally, we have the output. In other words, what will each particle look like? How will it be rendered? Here we can control things like the size and color of each particle, and we can even have this change over its lifetime. Now the boxes inside of these contexts are called blocks. They are small chunks of features that can be added to a context to do a specific task. Take for example the set velocity random block inside of our initialized context. This gives each particle a random velocity between a minimum and maximum value. We can tweak this to change the behavior or simply remove it and it will no longer affect our system. Let's for example change this to spread out evenly in all directions. So we'll go minus one to one on the X, minus one to one on the Y, and minus one to one on the Z. And we can see that our particles are now traveling evenly in all directions. If we simply remove it and also disable our gizmos here, we can see that our particles are now all just staying at the same point. Let's undo that by hitting Ctrl Z. We can always rearrange blocks to control which are applied first and some blocks like this one will even work in multiple contexts. If for example we move it to the update context, the particles are going to change direction every frame which gives this jittery look. 
I'm just going to go ahead and drag it back. Let's also set the minimum Y velocity to 0.2 again. Now creating a new block is actually super simple. We simply hover over the context where we want to create it and hit space. And here we have some different categories for the types of blocks that we can create. And the cool thing here is that this menu is context aware. So it's only going to present you with the options that actually make sense for the given context. In my case here, I'd like to add gravity to our particles. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for it. And indeed we have one called gravity force. And as you can see, as soon as we add this block, our particles start falling because of gravity. You'll also notice that in the top right corner, we're currently set to auto compile. This means that our effect is set to automatically update when we make changes. So let's try turning this off. And one thing you'll notice is that this doesn't actually apply to the values that we input in our blocks. If we change the force to minus two, it's going to update right away, even though auto compile is turned off. However, if we go ahead and actually remove a block, this isn't going to update because it needs to recompile to reflect this change. To do this manually, we can always hit compile or simply turn auto compile back on. Now what we're using here is an extremely simple particle system with a very low amount of particles. And as we talked about, one of the awesome things about running these systems on the GPU is that we can handle a lot of particles at once. In fact, let's just try going to the top here and increasing our spawn rate to say 10,000. You'll notice that nothing changes. And that's because we also have to increase our capacity, which is the maximum amount of particles allowed at any given time. Let's set this to 20,000. And there we go. We're now creating a huge amount of particles at once. Now with this many particles, it might be hard to see each individual one. So let's go to the bottom here and let's go into the set size over lifetime block. Here we have a graph where we can set the size of our particle during its lifetime. Let's still have it start at a fairly low value, but let's decrease the maximum value. And now we really start to see just how many particles are actually in here. So you probably already start to see just how efficient the VFX graph can handle large particle systems. Now Unity has also included a few templates to help you get started with the system you would like to create. Let's hit A to show our current system. Let's select all of it and hit delete. Let's then hit space and let's go under the system category. Here we have four different options. The empty particle system, which is going to create a particle system without any blocks in it. However, it has all the same contexts, the spawn, initialize, update, and output. You can also create a simple particle system. This was the one that we started with. The last two ones are the simple static mesh, which is going to create just that. It's going to display a 3D mesh as a particle. And finally, the simple swarm particle system. Now I think this template is the perfect example to show that by just adding a few blocks to these contexts, we can create really interesting effects. I mean, this system isn't much larger than the simple particle system. However, the real power of the effects graph is that we can create and chain together nodes that edit properties on these blocks. If we go to the top of our system under the spawn context, we could for example change the spawn rate of our system over time using a sine wave. And doing this is super simple. We simply go to the left here, hit space, and we can create a sine wave node. This is going to plug right into our spawn rate. It's going to have a frequency of one and it's going to go between zero and 25,000. Now using the input variable, we can actually shift through this sine wave. And we can of course have the input variable change over time. Now let's drag out from our input and release and let's search for time and let's use the one called total time. And there we go. We are now using time to shift the input of our sine wave. And based on the output of the sine wave, we're changing our spawn rate to be between zero and 25,000. So we can see it pulsating in the scene view, which is just super cool. And this is just by adding two simple nodes. And just to really signify this effect, let's go down under initialize and set the lifetime random to go between 0.5 and two. Really cool. Now, if you're using a lot of different nodes, it might be a good idea to add nodes to allow yourself to quickly figure out what's happening at a specific place. To do this, we can always right click and create a sticky note. We can change the size of it and give it a title, say sine wave, as well as a description. Finally, something that is really handy is the ability to expose parameters to be edited from the inspector. This is especially great if you're working with really complicated effects or would like to easily be able to add variations to the same effect without having to create a new graph each time. Now creating a new parameter is super easy. Simply hit the plus sign on the blackboard and we can choose from a bunch of different types. I'm going to create a simple float value 
And let's use this parameter to control the frequency of our sine wave. Let's first of all rename it by right clicking and hitting rename and let's call it frequency. Let's then set the default value to 1 and drag it in. We then link up this parameter to the frequency on our sine wave and we can now control this frequency from our blackboard. So we could set it to 4 to make it pulsate really quickly or to 0.1 to make that go real slow. I'm just going to default it back to 1. And right now we can only access and change this parameter from within the graph. So if we want to be able to change it in the inspector, we need to expose it. So let's hit the exposed checkbox and that's all we need to do. Let's go to a graph and save it and close down this window. And over here we can now see that we have a parameter called frequency. And if we click this checkbox here, we can override it with our own value. So let's set this one to 2 and let's also duplicate the effect and move it over. And let's set this one to 0.5. And we can see that using the same graph, we have now created two different effects. And you can even override parameters through script to really help integrate your effects with your game. So if we now switch to the game view, we can see our VFX in all their glory. Yay! That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Now there is of course so much more that you can do with VFX graph. This video is barely scratching the surface of the tip of the iceberg. So if you'd like to see more on how you can use VFX graph to create cool looking effects, definitely let us know in the comments. Also, as you might know, we recently launched Line of Code, which is a clothing store for game developers. Go check it out at lineofcode.io if you haven't already. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Make a Game, Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Alexander Blair, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Sheriff Abdullah, Chris, Faisal Marify, Thanks So Long, Leo Lissette, Clinton Fenskewa, Stray SD, Ronin, Bruins Cat, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, Cool Swedish Key, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Corey Jackson, Pacom Bernier, Robert Bund, Erasmus, Anthony Patton, Obrisi, James P, Tima Folderbach, John Shannon, Alex Jarotsky, Travis Dillon, Rudy and Dravon and Carsten Suerland. You guys rock!